Hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here. My name is Mary and today's video is going to be my Will I Read It for January 2023. So in these videos I like to go over some books that are coming out in the month. It just keeps me appraised of everything new that's coming out, things that I might want to read, things that I don't care about. Otherwise I don't really keep up with new releases and I'm just going to talk about some 2023 book releases for January. So the first one that I want to talk about is Lost in the Moment and Found by Shauna McGuire, which is the eighth book in the Wayward Children series. So these are like novellas, I think, novella length books, and they follow kids who find their own portal fantasy world like Narnia or whatever. <laughs> and then it's them back in their real world and dealing with the loss of their perfect like portal fantasy world. And they are at various schools, I believe. I have not read any of these books, but I've heard amazing things about them and I do plan on reading them at some point. But so far I have not prioritized that, but you'll have to let me know if you are interested in reading that one. The next book that I want to talk about is the third book in the Last Hours series by Cassandra Clare, Chain of Thorns. I have never read a Cassandra Clare book. I don't really think it's for me. I've thought about it because I've seen people do like read-alongs on booktube since I've been on here of different Cassandra Clare series, but I don't honestly think it's for me, so I'm probably not going to read it, but you'll have to let me know if you are excited for this one. It's a YA fantasy romance series. Next up, we have a third book in a romance series of standalones, A Guide to Being Just Friends by Sophie Sullivan, coming out on January 17th. And it's the third book in the Jansen Brothers series. I've never heard of this series before. I've never read anything by this author. I've never heard of this series or like really looked into it. If you have, let me know how you felt about it. I do like romance standalone series. I think they're fun. I assume based on the name that it's three brothers, but I could be wrong about that. You'll have to let me know if you're interested in that one. The next book I'm going to talk about is another fae fantasy book. It looks like it's a standalone. It's called Unseelie by Ivalice Houseman and it's like YA fantasy. It also is tagged as having ASD rep, which is interesting. It's a story about sisters who are twins. One of them is on the spectrum, the other one is not, and they are both fae and magic is what it sounds like. I, it says twin sisters both on the run but different as day and night. One, a professional rogue searches for a fabled treasure. The other, a changeling, searches for the truth behind her origins, trying to find a place to fit in with the realm of fae who made her and the humans who shun her. So I'm not really interested in reading this one, but you'll have to let me know if you are. It's got pretty good ratings so far. It's got a 3.93, which is not bad. Again, I'm kind of moving out of YA fantasy and also fae stories have never really interested me as much as I know that they interest other people. Next, we have the first book in a new duology by Hadir El Spy. It's called The Daughters of Izdihar and it is the first book in the Alamaxa duology. So this is a queer fantasy. It's her debut. And it's the first book in an incredibly powerful new duology set wholly in a new world, but inspired by modern Egyptian history. About two young women, Nahal, a spoiled aristocrat used to getting what she wants, and Georgina, a poor bookshop worker used to having nothing, who find they have more in common, particularly in their struggle for the rights of women and their ability to fight for it with forbidden elemental magic. So I do like elemental magic and I am always interested in a sapphic story. So I might be interested in this tentatively. I would consider reading this, I guess is what I'm saying. But you'll have to let me know if you are interested in that. Next up, we have a YA mystery thriller. This comes out on January 3rd or came out. So this is already out. And it's called They're Watching You by Chelsea Ichaso. So this book actually sounds really, really interesting. It has a secret society element and a like secret game element. So this girl, Polly, who went missing a few weeks ago and her roommate, Marin, is really worried about her and wants to find her. So she finds this invitation directed to Polly from a secret society to join in this game. And so it sounds like she's gonna try to complete the game and figure out what happened to her friend. That sounds really interesting to me. So yeah, I'm gonna put that on my list of tentative want to read. Next up we have Do I Know You by Emily Whipperly and Austin Siegmund Broca. This is a contemporary adult romance. Also the fact that it's written by two authors leads me to believe that they are writing alternate perspectives which is something that I really enjoy in my romance. I really like a romance that does dual perspective so you can see the mutual pining and affection happening. This says, when a couple starts to feel like they're married to a stranger, a flirtatious game of pretend becomes a spark they need to reignite their relationship. So Eliza and Graham have been together for five years. They are kind of like just out of the like intoxicating love part of their relationship. And so they go on this five year like trip to Northern California, I think is where it is. And while they're there at this resort, a person 
thinks that they're strangers and they don't know each other and so they introduce them to each other at a bar and they pretend to be strangers falling in love but then I think it actually is going to reignite their relationship so that also sounds pretty cute to me I I like the the idea behind that on January 31st we have The Black Queen by Jumada Emil. And this is a YA mystery thriller with a queer element. I'm just gonna read you this description because I don't think I can describe it better than this. And this is definitely a book that I'm interested in. So it says, Nova Albright was going to be the first black homecoming queen at Love It High, but now she's dead. Murdered on coronation night. Fans of One of Us is Lying and the Other Black Girl will love this unputdownable thriller. Tinsley MacArthur was supposed to be queen. Not only is she beautiful, wealthy, and white, it's her legacy. Her grandmother, her mother, and even her sister wore the crown before her. Everyone in Love It knows Tinsley would do anything to carry on the MacArthur tradition. No one is more certain of that than Duchess Simmons, Nova's best friend. Duchess's father is the first black police captain in Love It. For Duchess, Nova's crown was more than just a win for Nova, it was a win for all the black kids. Now her best friend is dead, and her father won't face the fact that the main suspect is right in front of him. Duchess is convinced that Tinsley killed Nova, and that Tinsley is privileged enough to think she can get away with it. But Duchess's father seems to be doing what he always does, fall behind the blue line, which means that the white girl is going to walk. Duchess is determined to prove Tinsley's guilt, and to do that she'll have to get close to her. But Tinsley has an agenda too. Everyone loved Nova, and sometimes love is exactly what gets you killed. So that sounds really good to me. I'm definitely gonna put that on my list, but you'll have to let me know if you are interested in reading that one as well. On January 17th, Locust Lane by Stephen Amadon, which is another mystery thriller. And it says for fans of Mystic River and Little Fires Everywhere, neither of which I've read, Stephen Amadon's Locust Lane is a taut and utterly propulsive story about the search for justice and the fault lines of power and influence in a seemingly idyllic town. Can anyone be trusted? So set in Massachusetts, in an affluent sub suburb, it follows a young woman who is found dead in the nicest part of town and the powerful neighbors close ranks to keep their family safe. It's going to be one of those stories about like privileged affluent people holding together as a community to uh, block their secrets in and I imagine that each family is going to have secrets that they don't want the other families to know but also if one secret comes out from a family over here it's going to destroy the whole thing because they're all like woven together. This is the kind of thing that I think is interesting. I've never really read a book that does this so well that I'm blown away. I think I am tentatively interested in this book but I'm not like super interested in it so I'll probably wait for reviews. Next on January 24th we have episode 13 by Craig DeLuey which is about a ghost hunting reality tv crew gaining unprecedented access to an abandoned and supposedly haunted mansion which promises a groundbreaking 13th episode but as they uncover the secret history of the house they learn that reality tv might be all too real. It's a considered a heart-pounding novel of horror and psychological suspense. Again I'm really intrigued by this concept. Um, I've talked about this before. I love like reality TV and I think it's such an interesting concept for a book. I've never really seen it done well so I will probably wait for reviews on this book as well but I am tentatively interested in that. There are a lot of things that I'm interested in this month I'm realizing. Next up we have Vampire Weekend by Mike Chen. This sounds dumb to me. <laughs> Sorry if you think this sounds cool. So it's a horror, vampire, fantasy, paranormal, whatever, with a contemporary twist. Uh, the tagline is being a vampire is far from glamorous but it can be pretty punk rock. It comes out on January 31st. It's about Louise Chow who is a vampire and she wants to join a punk rock, rock band. I don't know if this, I, I again don't really like books about music so it's not that interesting to me of a concept and also I don't know that I, I don't know that I'm currently the appropriate reader for this kind of urban fantasy setting. I don't know. I don't know if this sounds like something that I would really enjoy. So I'm probably not interested in that, but you'll have to let me know if you are. This one is a cover that I love. So I really hope it sounds interesting. I haven't looked into what this is about yet, but it's called Really Good Actually by Monica Heisey. This comes out on the 17th. And this is a hilarious and painfully relatable debut novel about one woman's messy search for joy and meaning in the wake of an unexpected breakup from comedian, essayist, and award-winning screenwriter Monica Heisey. It's supposed to be laugh out loud funny and filled with sharp observations. Really Good Actually is a tender and bittersweet comedy that lays bare the uncertainties of modern love, friendship, and our search for that thing we like to call happiness. This is a remarkable debut from an unforgettable new voice in fiction. I am interested in reading this. Next up, on January 3rd, The Bandit Queens by Parini Shroff came out, which is a mystery thriller set in India. Okay, this is going to be cute. I want to I wanna read this. So her husband went missing. People think that she's behind it, and then they also see that she's, like, doing fine as, like, a... A widow and like living her best life basically and so other women in her town are asking her to help 
them get rid of their husbands. This sounds kind of similar to Finley Donovan is Killing It, which I never read, but in that one, I think it's about a woman who is a crime author and someone overhears her book pitch and then thinks that she's an assassin and asks her to assassinate their husband. So I think that sounds kind of similar and it sounds cute. So I am interested in reading that. Next we have The Social Climber by Amanda Pellegrino. This is a mystery thriller, but the girl's name is Eliza Bennett. There's no way this is like a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. It doesn't say anything about it, but Elizabeth Bennett, Eliza Bennett. Anyways, Eliza Bennett is a social climber who is planning her dream wedding and she is engaged to Graham Walker, a high society Yale graduate from a prominent blue, blue blooded family, but secrets from Eliza's past are threatening to unwind her whole like twisted tale. This is also something that I think sounds interesting, but I feel like it has the chance to be like very mediocre or very good depending on how it's done. So I am interested in reading that one. Next up on January 10th, just the Nicest Couple by Mary Kubica. It says two couples, two close friends, one missing husband. So this is a, another mystery thriller. And I think it's just about what it's described as. I'm not gonna read any more about this. Um, I do think this sounds interesting. My dog is gonna bark at the mailman. Hey! Good boy. I do think this book sounds interesting. It's not like at the, the top, top of my list right now, but if it gets really good reviews, then I will maybe add to my list later. But right now I don't think it's like, Super calling to me. Next we have The House in the Pines by Anna Reyes. This is another mystery thriller and it says, armed with only hazy memories, a woman who long ago witnessed her friend's sudden mysterious death and has spent her life trying to forget sets out to track down answers. What she uncovers deep in the woods is hardly to be believed. I'm interested in this. It sounds like another literary thriller, which they've been hit and miss for me. I could be interested in this. It depends on why her memories are hazy. Like if it's, cause sometimes I really don't like that. So I probably will wait for reviews on this one as well, but I am tentatively interested in it. I will just see how other people feel about it. Speaking of Finley Donovan, I was talking about that earlier. On January 31st, the third book in the Finley Donovan series is coming out. I mentioned before, I have not read any of the Finley Donovan books yet. I have heard less good things about the sequel than I did about the first book, but you know, it's like a cozy mystery, funny time, I think. I haven't read it. Next we have the third book in the Spark House series by Helena Hunting, it's called Make a Wish and it comes out on the 24th. I believe this is another romance series of standalones. It's got a, a single dad trope, which people seem to love. It's like a second chance romance because it's someone that she like had a brief almost fling with years before and now he's back and he has a young daughter. So I'm, I'm interested in this book tentatively. So let me know if you have heard of this series before and if you've read any of them and if it's worth my time. But I have mentioned I do like a standalone romance. So next up, we have X's and O's by Amy Lee. And this I actually am planning on reading because there's a readathon hosted next month. I will link the creator down below in her video. It's called the X's and O's readathon. So they picked this as the group book, which I think is very funny. But this is book two in a series of standalone romances. I've not read book one. If I like book two, I might go back and read book one. I actually probably won't like this book actually. So especially because it's called the influencer series. I don't really like books about influencers to be honest, but it says a romance novel obsessed social media influencer revisits her exes on her hunt for true love in this romantic comedy from the author of Set on You. I will say I like the like concept of that. Like I like someone going back to find out what went wrong in their relationships and asking their exes that. I think that's a really interesting concept and could be pretty well done. So again, as I mentioned, I'm probably going to read that next month as part of that readathon, but I guess I make no promises. I've got to figure out if I can get my hands on it, but it does sound cute to me. And so it sounds like a good Valentine's Day read. On January 24th, we have Georgie All Along by Kate Claiborne, which is supposed to be a wise and witty novel that echoes with timely questions about love, career, reconciling with the past and finding your path while knowing your true worth. So this is another like contemporary chiclet romance book. I don't know, it's considered a smart, tender must read for everyone who's ever wondered about the life that got away. Next, a book that I'm also not interested in. This came out on January 3rd, and it is a YA fantasy featuring dragons called Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. It's the first book in the Song of the Last Kingdom series by, by Amelie Wen Zhao, and it's based on folklore and mythology in ancient China. Might read this if it gets really good reviews, but I'm away from YA these days. So especially like YA fantasy, I guess. Next we have The Davenports, which is book one in a series by Crystal Marquis. This comes out on January 31st and it's a historical romance. Again, I haven't read any historical romance, so I might like it, but I think I'm gonna wait for reviews on this as well to see if it's something that interests me. Next we have book two in the Pulse and Falls series. It's called The Hustler Next Door by K.A. Tucker. I've heard good things about K.A. Tucker from the romance community. I don't know if she would be an author for me, but this is again a contemporary romance set in Canada. It's called, it's considered new adult. It's about Justine McDermott, 
who is squatting in her best friend's house and working in an appliance store. And she was engaged, but he is now with somebody else. So when newcomer Garrett Harrington strolls into Murphy's looking to buy a refrigerator, Justine convinces herself she's found her rebound or the next love of her life, either works. But a chance encounter leads her to discover that Garrett isn't who he made himself out to be. And he's more interested in hustling her kindly old boss out of his family business and using her to do it. So I'm not interested in this book, but uh, you'll have to let me know if you want. Next up, we have a very popular celebrity memoir, which is Spare by Prince Harry. Also, I, no offense, but didn't he like revoke his title? So shouldn't it just be like Harry, whatever their last name is? What is their last name? Do they have a last name? I assume so. Doesn't matter. I don't care about the royal family. <laughs> I make it, uh, I make a point of not caring about the royal family. I think it's bar like bizarre that we still have a royal family anywhere in the world, especially England's because it's just a figurehead at this point. I don't get it. Full offense. Okay, I'm not reading it. But if you do read it, let me know if you like it. Okay, so we have The Villa by Rachel Hawkins. So I read The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, which was her Jane Eyre retelling, I believe. And I enjoyed it, but at that point I had never read Jane Eyre, so I have read Jane Eyre now. I don't remember anything about it. It's not a memorable book to me. I really apologize. The Villa is another book of hers that's coming out on January 3rd, or came out on January 3rd, and it's about Emily and Chess, who were inseparable when they were kids, but in their 30s their bond has been strained by the demands of their adult lives. So when Chess suggests a girl's trip to Italy, Emily jumps at the chance to reconnect with her best friend. And then they go to a villa, and the villa has a complicated history, sets in motion a chain of events that leads to Mari wondering, writing one of the greatest horror novels of all time, and Lara composing a platinum album, and ends in Pierce's brutal murder. So it's gonna have two timelines. It's gonna have the 1974 timeline where all of that stuff that I just talked about is happening, and then the present day timeline where these girls go to this villa that all this stuff happened in. I'm interested in reading this. I liked her other book. I heard really good things or really mixed things, I guess, about The Restless Girls. The Reckless? No, what was it called? Hold on. Yeah, Reckless Girls. <laughs> okay. I think they like get stuck on an island in that book. I heard some people really hated it and other people really loved it. Um, so I think she's pretty divisive as far as authors go. But because I did like The Wife Upstairs, I think I would like this as well. Next up, we have The Stolen Air by Holly Black, which is the first book in the Stolen Air duology, which is another fantasy fae book. I'm not gonna read it. I'm not that interested in Holly Black's stuff. I've debated reading The Cruel Prince, but to be honest, I'm not that interested in it. So I don't really think it's worth it for me personally, but you know. Next up on January 10th, we have All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham, which is another mystery thriller. And it's about a woman whose toddler a year before the book starts was taken out of his crib in the middle of the night. And it says that the case went cold and Isabel cannot rest until Mason is returned to her literally, which I think means that she probably has insomnia, which is probably gonna lead to some delusional thinking. I will wait for reviews on that one. I don't know if it's super interesting to me, but if you are interested in it, let me know. Next up, we have The Drift by CJ Tudor, which is another mystery thriller horror book. And it says three ordinary people risk everything for a chance at redemption in this audacious, utterly gripping novel of, a, of catastrophe and survival at the end of the world from the acclaimed author of The Chalk Man. So I do like an apocalypse book. So I am kind of interested in this. I'm gonna just save it for later and see if I end up wanting to read that. Next up we have a Talia Hibber book. I have read the first book in the Brown Sisters trilogy but I never continued in that trilogy and I think I should still because it sounds like something I would like but that is highly suspicious and unfairly cute. This comes out on or came out on January 3rd. It's about Bradley and Celine. Bradley is pretty much perfect. He's a star football player, manages his OCD well enough, and comes out on top in all his classes, except the ones he shares with his ex-best friend, Celine. Celine is conspiracy theory obsessed. Social media followers eat up her takes on everything from UFOs to holiday overconsumption. Yet, she's still not cool enough for the popular kids' table, which is why Brad abandoned her for the in-crowd years ago. So this is YA. I don't know that Talia Hibbert has read it, written any other ways. I've definitely not read any. Again, I've only read the one book. So I would be... I'm kind of curious to see how this one goes, but I honestly think I will wait for reviews. Next, we have the first book in a YA paranormal fantasy series called The Buried and the Bound by Rochelle Hassan. And this is a contemporary fantasy YA debut about monsters, magic, and wicked fae, perfect for fans of the darkest parts of the forest and the Hazelwood. I will say I did really enjoy the Hazelwood, so that is making me more interested in this. It's about a hedge witch in Blackthorn, Massachusetts, which is an uncommonly magical place. I think this could be fun. I know I said I moved, I'm moved. i moving away from YA fantasy, but because it's blurbed as being similar to another YA fantasy series that I really enjoyed, I do think that I could enjoy that. So I'm gonna 
hold it and see if I want to read it later. Next, we have the first book in the City of Nightmares series by Rebecca Schaefer, which is another YA fantasy. So this is urban fantasy and horror. And it says Gotham meets Strange the Dreamer in this thrilling young adult fantasy about a cowardly girl who finds herself at the center of a criminal syndicate conspiracy in a city where crooked politicians and sinister cults reign and dreaming means waking up as your worst nightmare. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm probably gonna wait for reviews on this one as well, but it was published on January 10th and you'll have to let me know if you've already read it or if you are interested in reading it. Next up we have the first book in the God Killer series which comes out on the 19th and this is a an adult queer fantasy by Hannah Kainer. I don't know if I already said that and it says kiss and kills gods for a living and she enjoys it. That is until she finds a god she cannot kill. Skydeseth, god of white lies, who is connected to a little noble girl on the run. I'm probably gonna wait for reviews of this one as well. It does sound interesting to me, but I'm in the middle of so many series that I really just need to continue more series before I pick up any new series, if that makes sense. The next book is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, which is the second book in the Alex Stern series, a sequel to Ninth House. I loved Ninth House when I read it last year. It was one of my favorite books of the year. Obviously, I'm very excited to read Hellbent. I am tentatively waiting for it to come out in paperback so that I can buy the paperback copy and read that instead of the hardcover that way it'll match the ninth house that I have but I also love this cover I don't know what it is about it I love it this is about a girl Alex Stern who gets invited to join Yale uh, because she has the ability to see ghosts and Yale secret societies like are actually magical and they attract ghosts and so her being able to see them means that she can keep them away from the people who are doing these rituals so that they don't get hurt by the ghosts and then it just follows her like adventures in Yale it also follows her relationship with the guy who's sort of training her and there's like a mystery element it's very fun I don't want to spoil anything because I can't remember what all is like public knowledge at the beginning of the book and what all is spoilers but I do really want to want to read Hellbent. Next we have Heartless Fates book one by Kaylee Smith which is a ruinous fate it comes out on or came out on the third excuse me this is another YA fantasy romance it's also tagged as queer and witches I do like witchy books or I want to get into more witchy books and this says, fate does not choose the weak, fate chooses the ready. And it's supposed to be a charming and chaotic ensemble cast of characters. This first book in a planned series by debut author Kaylee Smith will sweep readers away with its utterly immersive world building, swoonworthy romance, and action-packed storytelling. So I'm kind of interested in this one, but again, I'm definitely not going to pick it up before I hear reviews, but it does interest me. Next we have How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, which is a book that I am interested in. I've only read one Grady Hendrix book, I'm pretty sure, but I really liked it. It was the book Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. And he's got just like a very comedic writing style with his horror, which I love comedy horror in movies as well. So um, it works for me really well. And I do want to read more books by him. I do want to read this book. This I think is about a family who like these two kids, their mother dies or somebody in their family dies, leaves in this house and they get to the house. They're trying to just like sell it really quick and they find out that the house is haunted and then it just goes from there. Came out on the 17th because it'll be out by the time you're watching this video. Let me know if you have read that book or if you are interested in it. Next up, we have another YA contemporary romance by Emma Lord, which is Begin Again. Emma Lord wrote When You Get the Chance, which I have read. I thought When You Get the Chance was just okay, so I'm not like dying to read this book, but I will probably wait for reviews. It comes out on the 24th, and it's about a girl who has a plan to transfer from community college to a hyper competitive Blue Ridge State, uh, which is a college, I guess, near her. And so this is going to be new adult instead of young adult, it sounds like. She's college aged and she meets, she's in a rocky relationship with a guy named Connor. Never a good move. Sorry if your name is Connor or your partner's name is Connor. I'm sure they're nice. And then she's got a roommate and she meets Milo, who is a coffee guzzling grump of an RA. I kind of assume that Milo is going to be the love interest, but we'll see. That does sound cute. Maybe I will add it to my list. I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see if I end up reading that one. Next, we have the first book in the Spice Road trilogy called Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim, which is a YA fantasy, again, based in mythology. And this says, for fans of Saba Tahir, which I am, Hafsa Faisal and Elizabeth Lim, who I've never read from, it's set in an Arabian-inspired land raised to protect her nation from the monsters lurking in the sands. 17-year-old Imani must fight to find her brother, whose betrayal is now their greatest threat. Okay, I'm interested in reading that one. I know I've been saying that I don't want to start a new series, but I, again, if it's mentioned as being similar to something that I've already read and really enjoyed, I'm much more likely to want to pick it up. So that's why I'm interested in that. Next, we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which 
I'm not interested in just based on the name. I feel bad. But it says a commercially professor journeys to a small town in the far north to study fae for folklore and discovers dark fae magic, friendship, and love in this heartwarming and enchanting fantasy. This is the first book in a series. You'll have to let me know if you're interested in reading it. I do really like the cover. Next up, on January 10th, we have Good for a Girl by Lauren Fleshman, which is, I think, like, kind of a memoir by Lauren Fleshman, who apparently is one of the most decorated distance runners in the United States. I don't keep track of running that much, but this does sound interesting because I do like the look at female athletes and what they go through on a daily basis and the, like, lack of pay for what they do. But I am interested in reading this book. It does sound interesting. It says, I love how, this is from a blog. Uh, it's the Booklist Queen blog. I will link her blog down below as well since I'm mentioning it. But she says, I love how she was able to talk, take her personal experience and expand it to a larger narrative about women in sports. It makes me so angry how badly our society has failed women of my generation with their obsession with weight and thinness. Yet by bravely addressing these issues, books like Good for a Girl make me hopeful that we can make the world a better place for my daughters. I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm going to be talking about this must read for the next year at least. So I'm interested in reading that book. Next up we have Jane Harper's Exiles. I read... The Lost Man by Jane Harper. I really enjoyed it. This is the second book in the Aaron Falk series in South Australia, uh, in the wine country. So I'm, I'm interested in, I think she's an Australian author, which is why her books are set there. I'm interested in reading more from her, but I don't really like the idea of like detective series um, or serialized mysteries. I know, I don't know what it is about it. It just doesn't appeal to me, but maybe I would like it if I read it. So this comes out on January 31st. I have not read the first in the Aaron Falk series. I'm not that interested in it. You'll have to let me know if I should be and if you really enjoy it. Next up, we have Small World by Laura Zygman, which is a literary fiction book that came out on the 10th. And it says, a brave and heartfelt book of truths. It's a heartfelt novel about two offbeat and newly divorced sisters who move in together as adults and finally reckon with their childhood. So we all know one of my favorite tropes is sister relationships, sibling relationships. So I'm very interested in this as a concept. I am definitely interested in that book and reading it. You'll have to let me know if you are as well. Next up, we have A Thousand Miles to Graceland by Kristen May Chase. It says, when Grace's husband asks for a divorce, she has no excuse not to grant her mother her 70th birthday wish and take a road trip to Graceland. On the trip, Grace starts to understand her mother better, repair their relationship, and find a second chance at love. I suppose I'm tentatively interested in this, but not, like, dying to read it. Next, we have The Mitford Affair by Marie Benedict, which is a historical fiction book, which I don't think I'm interested in at all. This comes out on January 17th. And it says, probing the torrid political climate in the lead up to World War II and the ways that seemingly sensible people can be sucked into radical action, the Mitford Affair follows Nancy's valiant efforts to stop the Nazis from taking over Great Britain and the complicated choices she must make between the personal and the political. That sounds boring, but I hope other people enjoy it if that sounds like something you'd like. Next up, we have Phaedra by Laura Shepperson, which is another like Greek mythology retelling. So this says... Laura Shepperson offers a powerful feminist retelling of Phaedra and her unyielding quest for justice, perfect for fans of Madeline Miller and Natalie Haynes. I've never read Natalie Haynes. I read Song of Achilles and liked it. Um, everyone else loves that book, and I think I was just, like, not sold by the hype of it, but it was good. So I am tempted to read this book, but I don't really know that much about Phaedra, so I don't know if it's, like, totally for me. I'll probably wait for reviews. Next up, also on January 24th, we have The Minuscule Mansion of Myra Malone by Audrey Burgess. <laughs> this is a fantasy book. And it says, Myra Malone blogs about a dollhouse mansion and has thousands of followers. But the mansion is more than it seems as rooms disappear and reappear overnight. Across the country, Alex is shocked to see someone recreating her bedroom, or his bedroom. Alex and Myra, Myra correspond to trace the stories that entwine them. So this sounds bizarre, but I'm really interested in reading it. <laughs> so it's kind of like, um, if you ever saw the movie Stranger Than Fiction, which I can't remember who was in it. Is it Will Ferrell? It might be. I don't know who it is. I think that's right, though. But it's about this, like, British author who is writing a, a, a novel, and it's actually a real man whose story she's writing, and he starts to hear her voice narrating what he's doing in his head, and he thinks he's going crazy, but then he finds out that it's actually, like, a real thing, and she always kills her characters at the end of her books, so he's got to, like, convince her not to kill him, basically. That's what that sounds like to me, where it's like, you don't realize you're doing something, that's actually affecting someone else. Um, but I kind of like that stuff. I think that's a very interesting, like a very interesting concept. So I am definitely interested in reading that book. So we have Age of Vice by Deepti Kapoor, which came out on the third. And this says, this is the age of vice where money, pleasure, and power are everything and family ties that bind can also kill. It's set in New Delhi in India. And it's probably a literary thriller is what it sounds like. Because the first genre is fiction and usually that means like a more literary take on a genre. 
It says, a speeding Mercedes jumps the curb and in the blink of an eye, five people are dead. It's a rich man's car, but when the dust settles, there is no rich man at all, just a shell-shocked servant who cannot explain the strange series of events that led to this crime. Nor can he foresee the darkness, the dark drama that is about to unfold. So this does sound interesting. I know this was a book of the month pick. I'm gonna wait for reviews for that reason because there will be some, but I am like tentatively interested in that, but I don't know if I'm like 100% interested in that. Next up, we have an Enemies to Lovers debut rom-com that came out on January 10th. It's called Lunar Love by Lauren Kung Jessen. And this I am interested in. It says for people who like Helen Huang, which I, I love Helen Huang. But it says, Olivia is excited to take over her grandmother's matchmaking business, which is based on the traditional Chinese zodiac. When she finds out that LA's most, most eligible bachelor has taken this idea and turned it into an app, Liv is furious. The two go head to head in this enemies to lovers romance by debut by a debut author. So I have heard a little bit about this book, but apparently she wants to make like a traditional Chinese zodiac based matchmaking service. He makes an app based on the same idea. And he's convinced that the app will be able to do it faster than she will. So they're trying to match make people. They're like racing to match make I, probably one person. I don't know exactly who. I'm definitely interested in this book. It sounds really cute. And I do love enemies to lovers. I love the concept of like a competition. I think it just sounds like a lot of fun. Next up, we have a code name Blue Wren, the true story of America's most dangerous female spy and the sister she betrayed by Jim Popkin. This is a true story of Ana Montes, an officer at the Defense Intelligence Agency and a double agent working for Cuba. Her father was a U.S. Army colonel and her and both her brother and sister-in-law were FBI agents. Her sister also worked for the FBO. I don't know what the FBO is. This is the ultimate story of betrayal. I'm kind of interested in this, but also it sounds like it might not be like as interesting as I'm like wanting it to be. So we'll see how I feel about that. Next up, we have The Love Match by Priyanka Taslim which I am interested in because it's be it's blurbed as to all the boys I've loved before meets Pride and Prejudice, which are both things that I love. This came out on January 3rd. It's a YA contemporary romance. Hello, I ran out of storage in the middle of filming the last clip. Uh, so I'm gonna take that as a side to have this be the last book. I'm talking about The Love Match by Priyanka Taslim. I don't know how far I got, but this says to all the boys I've loved before meets Pride and Prejudice in this delightful and heartfelt rom-com about a Bangladeshi American teen whose meddling mother arranges a match to secure their family's financial security just as she's falling in love with someone else. So it sounds like it's gonna be a love triangle book. I do love To All the Boys I've Loved Before in that whole series, but I am interested in reading this book. So I did wanna finish that out because I did start talking about it and it is something that I would like to read sometime. So that's it. Those are all of the, not all, those are a bunch of the new releases that are coming out in 2023 in January. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books and how you felt about them. Also let me know if you are planning on reading any of these books and you think I should plan on reading them as well. Like if you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me and I will see you in another video very soon.